Good morning, New Beginning, and all God's people all around. Uh, this is Sunday, August the 16th, and uh, it, it is a beautiful summer day, and we are glad and we are rejoicing in it. God's Word is taking us this morning to Psalm 22. Turn your scriptures to Psalm number 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and not silent. Yet, you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In, your, in you, our fathers put their trust, they trusted and you deliver them. They cry out, and we, they cry out, and we're saved. And, and, and you, they trusted, and were not disappointed. But I am a worm, and not a man, scorned by men, and despised by the people. All who see me mocked me, they hurled insult, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not bear far from me. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Basham encircle me, roaring lions tearing their prey open their mouth wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, and it has melted away within me. My strength is dry up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me, and a band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. 
Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the Afri afflicted and the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes to the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you will I fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belong to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, prosperity will serve him. Future generation will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. That is the word of the Lord. Or oh, may he add his blessing to his word to us this morning. Let us go before the Lord in prayer as usual. Please always come to the worship with a with a preparation or a plan, uh, a prayer list or, uh, to come before the Lord so that we know exactly uh, that uh, when we are before him, what we would like to really pray and, uh, and how we want to praise him. Because I'm sure this past week he has been good to you. And you want to give him praise. You want to give him praise in your family, among the family, and also give him praise with whoever you are worshiping with this morning. The Lord is worthy of all of our praise. So let us go to him, remembering the COVID-19 that is still all around. Let us remember before him, <clears throat> uh, those who are sick, those who are lonely and in need of our prayers, those who uh, who have been brokenhearted for this past week, that is in need of a touch from the Lord. Let us pray for unity uh, in our family, unity in our world, and unity among us. Please join me as we go before the Lord and pray this morning. Shall we pray? Father, you have been our resting place through all the years before we knew about the world in which we live. We learned about you. From our earliest memories, we have known that you are everlasting from everlasting. While we tend to get lost in the details of our living, we rejoice that in you we can find the greater hope, the grace abounding, the care that lies in the heart of all things. Lord, teach us to make use of every day that we may have a heart of wisdom and be set free from the frustration of fearing the future. Even now, as we have faced this 
monster we call COVID-19 in our society and in our world. We fear no evil, for you are with us. And we pray that you will be with those who are sick in the hospital, and you will be with those who are sick at home, and you will be with those who are longing for a touch from you, and that in your mercy this morning you will touch us. We pray for our children. We pray for our youth, especially those who will be leaving to go to university, that you will go with them and that you will send your angels to protect them. Oh Lord, we, we pray for those who have been afflicted down from COVID-19 or the situation that is all around them. We lift them up before you, O Lord. May we know this morning that we do have a God and he is in control and he is in charge of all things. As we wait before you, strengthen us inwardly with the true assurance of your unfailing love. Let us sing joyfully with the rhythms of life, making for gladness in the world all the days we live. This is our prayer to you, our Heavenly Father. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Uh, this morning, as I have already said, uh, that our uh, message from God's Word is coming to us from Psalm 22. And uh, in Psalm 22, we want to really speak to you uh, about the, the, how to deal uh, with despair. So the title of the message this morning is that dealing with despair. Oh, there isn't anyone that I know that I've never really have a dark day or a dark week in their lives. <clears throat> Many of us have had those dark days or week or sometimes maybe for a while to, to some it might be a, a dark year. Many people have said that this past year or this year has been a very difficult for them. And then because of that, we have fell into despair. We wonder uh, if things will ever change. So to all those who have been thinking that way, the word of the Lord is coming to you. Pay attention to Psalm 22 as we go through it. My text is in Psalm 22 and verse 1, where the psalmist David cry out to the Lord, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? In all the Bible, there is found only one question Jesus ever asked his heavenly Father. In praising here and phrasing his question, he borrowed the words of David in Psalm 22 and verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? They contain all the agony he experienced during the dark hours of Calvary. In the abysmal darkness of separation from God 
for the only time in eternity, Jesus cried out of the depths of his despair. And this is what we love about the Lord Jesus Christ because the Bible says he is familiar with everything that you and I have ever gone through and ever faced in our lives. Because Jesus experienced this total agony, he is able to identify it with the feelings of despair that invades people's lives. He is able to identify with how you are feeling today. And he is able to identify with the feeling of despair that is in your heart as you come before him to worship this morning. All of us experience times when we cannot seem to find a reason, to find a purpose for living and everything connected with the agony of life is blurred and indefiable. Psalm 22, which describe a period in David's life, can be divided into three sections for our message this morning. First, the predicament in which the psalmist finds himself. What is the implication of David's question in verse 1? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? First, it is indicates a sense of forsakenness. Here, the same individual who wrote the incomparable 23rd Psalm that we have done a couple weeks ago, expressing the closest relationship with God, is now plumbing to the depths of despair. He had come to a moment in life when he felt totally alone in the world in which he was. This teaches us that there is nothing you'll sorry about suffering. Yes, we do have groups and churches that says a Christian should have never ever in their lives experienced suffering we know that the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we follow, he had experienced suffering in his life. And here, David, his servant, is describing to us a period of great suffering and loneliness and darkness in his life. David's cry also indicates perplexity. It is not true that faith asks no question. There are some who preach and insist that if you have faith, you should not ask God any question and you should never question the terrible mishaps and the terrible loss and the terrible things that happen in your life and in my life. There in Psalm 22, we are encouraged just like David, we are encouraged just like the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ in time of despair to cry out, asking God the question that he alone can answer. David cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is not to that faith does not really ask any questions. Rather, a sound faith in God will help a Christian ask profitable questions in the hours of darkness. David's questions spring from his belief, not his unbelief. In spite of the 
uh, acuteness of David despair, he did not lose sight of God. He could still cry, my God, my God. It is the triumph of faith when one realizes even in the darkest hour of the deepest anguish that God is still there and that he is the God with whom is no viableness, neither shadow of turning. As James tells us in James chapter 1 and verse 17, if you would turn there, James said that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. James is calling you and me to always remember even in the darkest time, in the darkest hours, that God never leaves and he never forsake and that God is always there. Let me ask you this morning as you worship, have you been there? Do you know what it is to be in despair? Do you know what it is to go through the midnight of life, to be in the darkest hours, to be in the darkest day or the darkest month or year of your life? Have you lost a loved one that you do not know how and when you will ever be getting over it? When healing will ever come to your heart? Are your days dark? Are your nights darker? David is calling us and he is reminding us that you can cry out. You can come to God always and cry out. James is reminding us that God does not change. He is with us. And he, he, he does care about what you are feeling right now. So as you face the darkest hour or the darkest days or months or even year of your life, I am calling you to draw near to God and God will draw near to you. He has providence for you and providence for the dark day and the dark hours and the dark year of your life. Secondly, David plead for help. Look at Psalm 22. In verse 19, in Psalm 22, in verse 19, the psalmist really cry out or plead to the Lord for help. He knows exactly where help will come. But you, O oh Lord, he said in verse 19, but you, O oh Lord, be not far off. O oh my strength, come quickly to help me. David prayed, be not far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste to help me. In the problem of pain, C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speak to us in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Perhaps it is not so much that God shouts, but that self is silent and the voice of God sounds 
so clearly in our souls when we are in great crisis and when great crisis comes into our lives. Oh, this is an opportunity to hear God at his Lord is speaking to you and speaking to your heart. As we face in dealing with COVID-19, as you have faced the loss of a loved one in your life, as you have lost jobs and lost your health and your strength, God is trying to speak to you the loudest that he can through your pain and through your despair and through the crisis that you are facing or had faced in your life. Trouble is a blessing when it drives us near to God. At the lowest point of his suffering, Job cried in Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Job cried, Though you slay me, yet will I trust in him. That was not an expression of blind faith or historicism but of a child of God holding to his heavenly father with the tenacity that only love can make possible. David despair drove him to God instead of away from him. This is the saddest moment I have ever had in my life when I meet someone that is in despair, someone that is in great suffering, someone who is going through a great crisis in their lives, and they tell me, Pastor, I cannot pray. I cannot read my Bible. I cannot even come to the worship. I am... I am disappointed with God. David is teaching you and I something great this morning in Psalm 22. His problems, his despair, he, the crisis of his life, instead of taking him away from God, has brought him closer to God. Oh, that may be the, what is happening to you even this day. Do not let problems, crisis, despair driving you away from your God. Or like David say, my God, let the despair and the problems bring you closer to him. In another Psalm, in Psalm 120, David said, I will lift up my eye to the hill whence cometh my help. He answered the question that you and I need to know today that my help will come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Do not go away from God because of problems. Come closer to God with all your problems because he alone has the solution for your problem. He alone has the question for your problem. Because past experiences had taught David that God was merciful and gracious. And he's slow to anger and abounding in mercy. David knew that he could always come close to his heavenly father. David knows that God will be always attentive to his cry, just as he is even today for you and for me. His conditioning refused to allow him to believe that God was unconcerned with his suffering. He was perplexed nonetheless he bared his soul before God. Oh, when last have you really 
taken time to be alone with God or to call your family together and say the crisis we are going through right now is threatening you. The storm that is in our lives right now is threatening our very soul and the foundation of our own lives and the life of our family. The crisis that is going on in our city and in our world is shaking the world and it is threatening. David would say to you and to me, come closer to the Lord. Let your faith in him and your trust in him bring you close because he is familiar with all of our suffering and he is able to identify and to feel with us what we are going through. Thirdly, David prays to God for deliverance from sorrow and suffering. Look at Psalm 22, especially in verse 22. I declare your name to my brothers. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. David's abrupt change in mood, followed by his uh, admonition to all to praise God. It is as if some holy quietness had settled in the turbulent soul of David that he was describing to us here in Psalm 22. It is as if some holy quietness has come and ring over him and has taken him over. Now he was prepared to rejoice before the Lord. How often have we agonized through a long night of suffering? A long day of suffering. It seems that the, that day was the longest day, the longest night, perhaps the longest week and the longest period of our life. David has gone through that. And through the agony of a long night over some problem, some unsolved heartache, only with the joy of a new day to experience a rest in the Lord, a calm and a sweet peace that really defies description. God promises in Psalm 30, in verse 5, if you turn there in Psalm 30, in verse 5, weeping, he said, may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh, I don't know if you have ever gone through a night of pain. A night of pain, literally. And then you can't wait for the daylight to reflect in the window. Oh Lord, did I survive that night? Is it really morning? You will be asking yourself and those around you. Yes, in spite of the darkest night and the most suffering night in crisis, in despair in our lives, the Lord always brings to us the daylight. The night will not last. The day will come. The darkest moments in the darkest time of my life in your life will come to an end. And we must never forget that lest we despair. Better days are ahead. The sun will shine again. COVID-19 will one day be history. The pain and the suffering will one day be over. It soon be done. 
all sorrows and trials when we get home on the other side. Yes, suffering will be there for a while, but it will never last for the children of God. Whatever you are facing now and whatever you have been facing, I want to encourage you that the daylight will come, dawn will come, and that God will bring uh, the sunshine back in your soul and that God will bring back to you the joy that comes only in the morning. Oh, that this is often the way God's providence as he works out his will in us. That in our despair, in the moment of crisis, oh, that our God is always there. He's always there and he's always with us. Oh, this is again in, in the 23rd Psalm, David, David eh, has really claimed that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will be with me and your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. The Psalm closed with the shout of deliverance instead of forsakenness the psalmist found fulfillment instead of question the answer was at hand in spite of the bleak and the doleful beginning of the psalm the unbreakable strand of faith runs throughout we can liken it to our communications cable that runs from the shore and dips down out of sight beneath the waves of the sea and emerges on the other side. It is out of sight, but it is intact and the message is going through. Oh, that you and I will hope in the Lord again. Oh, that you and I will trust in the Lord again. That you and I will come with more even determination through the trials of COVID-19. That our God was and is faithful and will always remain faithful to us in spite of what is going on around us. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12, please turn there with me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12, Paul said, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Christians accept the reality of suffering in the light of their faith and confidence in God's redemptive purpose. Oh, do not listen ever to the voice that tells you that Christians do not suffer in pain in crisis, in despair, is never to come to a Christian. Listen, it does come to us, but listen, God promised to be with us, and then we can always come on the other side of our suffering, more than conquerors, with joy in our hearts, that we do not know, but a strength was given to us that was not our own, that God has strengthened us each and every day to face our crisis and our problems and our despair. And now it is a moment of jubilee and it is a moment of rejoicing. 
There are many things we do not and cannot know about suffering and sorrow. We do not share omniscience. We do not share omniscience with God. But we do know that beyond this veil of tears is a brighter day. Christians can deal with despair when they are able to look in the retrospect of God's sustaining grace during the heart-crushing experiences of life. Oh, I am inviting you this day to trust in the Lord with all your hearts and never to give up and never to despair because you have a God that knows all things and that is in all things. You have a God that cares and he cares enough to carry you through the pain that you have been through and the pain that you are going through. And you will see that at the end of the dark night, the day will dawn again. God will bring joy to your heart again. The job will come back again. The suffering will be over. Oh, may the Lord in his mercy help us to deal uh, with our despair and to come to Christ who knows and who can sympathize with our pain and our suffering. And with him, I can assure you, there is no days, no night that will be dark enough that the light of the Lord Jesus Christ will not shine through it. Oh, that you will be able to testify this week to a friend, to a family member, that you feel that is depressed, that is in despair. Better days are ahead because what God has done for you is no secret. He can also do it for others. Now may the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And as you go to live and to serve in our homes, in our school, in our community, in our business, and throughout the whole world, may the love of God be lived through us and in us and now and forevermore. Amen.